Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. I invite you to follow along with me. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, so they asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where, Jesus was, where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we pray that you would speak your words to us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I once read a book about a woman who uh, came to America from China. And when she passed away, there was some confusion about what name to put in her obituary. She was born with a name given to her by her parents, and then she married and took her husband's last name. When they divorced and she later moved to America, she assumed her old last name with a new American first name, Daisy. And then she remarried, so she had a completely new name, Daisy, with her husband's new last name. They were married for many years until he died, and then in her later years, she remarried a third time and took his name. When he died, she dropped his last name, used it for a middle initial, and went back to her second husband's last name. And she had quite a few nicknames. So what name do you put in the obituary? Which names her true identity? We all have many identities, right? One of our identities is our name. Um, another identity is our social security number. But we also identify ourselves in other ways. If I asked you to describe yourself to me, if I said to you, who are you, I would probably get lots of different answers. I am the mother of three or the grandmother of four. I am a farmer, a trucker, a teacher, a nurse. I'm retired. I'm a high school student. I'm in fourth grade, you might tell me. There are many different ways that we identify ourselves, and those things change over time. I have lots of different identities and hats that I wear. I am a pastor, a wife, a daughter, a mother, a sister, a friend. And I think today's gospel lesson is at its heart about identity. The Levites and the priests want to know for sure who this man John is. Who are you, they ask him. John had a following already. He had disciples, people who followed him around and listened to his teaching, people that probably taught what he was saying to other people. So word of mouth had spread around, and now people were starting to question whether or not John was the Messiah, the one whom they had been waiting for. He seemed to be pretty aggressive and pretty loud and pretty vocal, and those were all characteristics that the people wanted in their Messiah. So the Jewish leadership finally got word of what John was doing, and they send out these priests and Levites to figure out just who this guy is and what he thinks he's doing. Who are you, they ask him. I think his first answer is really interesting. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 20, he says, it says, He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. He confessed. 
I mean, I guess he could have lied and told him he was the Messiah. If this was a fictional movie written by Hollywood, that's probably what would have happened because cases of mistaken identity are always used for humor in the movies. But John wasn't in a movie, so scripture says he confessed to them, I am not the Messiah. John knew who he was. In the depths of his soul, he knew his identity. And so they keep questioning him further. If you're not the Messiah, well, then who are you? They had to know who he was. If he was anyone important, they needed to pay homage to. So in verses 21 and 23, they ask him more questions. Are you Elijah? He says no. Are you the prophet? He says no. Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? Now, again, John could have lied. He could have told them he was Elijah or a prophet, but he doesn't. On a side note, I once heard someone say, which I think are very wise words, that you'll notice in scripture that prophets never identify themselves as such. They never call themselves that. So if you hear someone say they are a prophet, you should probably be a little wary about what they're doing. I think that's good advice. John does not call himself a prophet. Instead, he gives them this important piece of his identity. He quotes from a prophet. From Isaiah, he says, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. He tells them that he was sent there to do the work of proclaiming Christ's coming. He gives them his purpose, which is an important part of John's identity. Knowing who he is not, Christ, Elijah, the prophet, John can then be clear about who he is, one sent from God to announce the presence of Christ and to call others to recognize Christ. Like John, I think before we can be heralds of Christ, before we can be ones proclaiming his birth, we have to answer that first question, who are you? I think during this season of Advent, this question is very important to us. The gospel lesson tells us that we have to know who we are. We have to know what our true identity is. We are not, all the time, who people want us to be. We must realize who we are and own up to it. So for us, what is the answer? Who are we really? Like I said, we tend to identify ourselves by what we do. I'm a banker, a teacher, a plumber. But the gospel, I think, challenges us to understand that what we do must flow from who we are. I am a child of God. We are the body of Christ. In this time of Advent, what can we point to that is an important part of our identity is the central message of this season. We are the children of God. Like John, we can identify ourselves first by who we are not, and then by who we are. We are not a people who are despondent and without hope. We are a people who live with hope and faith. We are not a people who are defined by our sins, but we are a people who are defined by our forgiveness and transformation through Christ. We are not a people who have to be defined by our inadequacies, but a people who are made more than adequate through Christ. We are not a people who live in fear or dread, but a people who live with joy and peace. We are not a people who wander aimlessly, but a people who were created with a purpose. That is who we are as children of God. Not only did John know who he was and who he was not, but he knew what he was supposed to do. He knew his purpose, right? He was the one, the voice of one, crying out in the wilderness. He was the one who was sent to proclaim the coming of the Lord, to get people ready, to help people prepare. So many times, as people of this century, we get caught up in wondering why we are here, what's our purpose, what does God want us to do And some of us get so caught up in asking those questions that we become paralyzed, unable to do anything. I want you to hear me when I tell you that God has already given you a purpose and a mission. God has called us to love one another, to free the captive, to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to give money to the poor, to take care of the widow and the orphan and the stranger amongst us. If we take care to fulfill our mission to make disciples, then we will know our purpose. 
The effectiveness of John's testimony depends on him knowing that he is not the light, nor the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. John knows who he is not, and he knows who he is, the voice of one crying out in the desert. The effectiveness of our ministry depends on whether or not we know who we are and what it is we are supposed to be doing. We have to listen to the call of Isaiah to the message of repentance that John brings, and to the mission that Jesus gives the church to make disciples. This is what we are called to do. This is who we are called to be, a people who take care of each other, who love one another, and in so doing, are witnesses pointing to the one who is to come. Friends, let us this season shine our lights for Jesus Christ, that all the world may know. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.